Welcome to my uh, Twixter tutorial on After Effects. Um, it's just a simple tutorial on how to get the most effective results in Twixter without using too many tracking points or anything too complicated. So anyone can pretty much do it. So as you can see, I've got my clip imported here. It's been fr uh, filmed at 59.94 frames per second. Uh, that's very important for the effect of Twixter. Now, just drag your clip down into the timeline. Um, as you can see, just basically wanting to get catching the ball. He's going to catch the ball in slow motion. So I'm just going to hit keyframe. Oh no, sorry. First, select the clip effect Twixter Pro. If you haven't got that there sitting there already since you haven't used it before, just effects, revision plugins, and Twixter Pro. You may not have this, you may need to download. Um, so you can try and find that on the internet. Um, first thing you want to do is go to the effects tab that drops down after selecting Twixter and hit the input frame rate, which was the frame rate that you filmed at. So mine was 59.94. Hit enter. Now, once you've done that, just have a look at a few of these settings. Most of them can stay the same. I prefer to use frame interpretation to be motion weighted and inverse with smart blend for the warping. Um, they're the ones I've found to be the most effective. Now, once you're here, go down to the drop down menu in the timeline, hit effects, Twixter Pro, and then output control. Now, once you got here, straight away wherever you are on the video, as long as it's before you want it to be slow, hit a keyframe at 100. This will just make sure that the start of the video stays at the correct speed. Okay, so then once you've done that, move forward to the part of the video where you want to start being slow. So I'd say mm, from here. Okay, so once you're there, move back one frame from where you want to start and then keyframe it again at 100. And then move forward one frame and input half of the 100, so 50. Hit enter, you should see the video move back slightly. <coughs> Once you've done this, move forward another two frames, so double the amount of frames you moved forward last time, so one, two, and that should move a little bit more, and then change the speed to half again, so 25. Hit enter. Once you've done that, move the, the the time, the time, playhead, sorry, to four, four frames more. So one, two, three, four. Should skip four frames. You see it move a tiny bit, and then approximately half it again. I'll just jump straight down to ten. So hit ten and enter. And it should move back a bit then. And once you're here, depending on how slow, I'll go down to five. So hit. Now you've done four, so I'm just going to do move eight frames ahead. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Should move slightly and then hit here. Five, hit enter. Should move back a little bit. Okay, now you've done this. It's probably slow enough. Let's just have a little run through to have a look how it goes. Okay, so just render through that. It's looking pretty slow. Doesn't look like there's too much warping, which is good. Uh, just let that render. It's getting pretty slow. Okay, let's just have a look through there. So you can see it nice and slow. So you can see in comparison to the 100, which is okay. Yeah, that's looking alright. Okay. So what you want to do then is once you've got the basics of the slow motion and where you want to start. Just move to where you want it to stop being slow motion. So I think I'll jump maybe to here, just when he starts to fall. Now a problem you may come across, which I had to overcome, was that your composition and clip has been cut off because of the slow motion and the time change. Now this is easy fix, just select your clip, uh, right click it, go up to time, and enable time remapping. Now once you've done that, it should not do anything really visible, but then you will need to extend the time of the composition. 
to allow for the extra time in the clip. So go to composition, right click it, composition settings. Now move down to the duration and just put three, I'll just put 20 seconds in. So hit 20, okay, now you should see your time. Now I've got plenty more space and just extend your clip like this to wherever you need, however long you want it to be until it ends obviously. Okay, so move to the part of the video where you want to stop being slow. So I'm going to move to about there where it starts to fall down. We're going to hit another keyframe at five. So once you've done this, move forward a couple of frames. It's not too important how many you move forward here, just enough to make it nice and slow. Okay, you don't want the fall to be too gradual because it just looks a bit uh, jittery. So move that up there and that can just jump straight to 20. Hit that, you should move down a bit. Uh, move forward a couple of frames, maybe two or three, because you are going further with the amount of frames that now exist. So then hit it at maybe 50 frames. It should move, so maybe move forward two more frames. And if depending if you want it back to 100, I'll just put it up to 80 just to give a slowish effect of landing. So it's 80 and it should land there. Okay, so let's have a look at that landing quickly. Just render that out. Okay, there you can see it starts to move faster after the keyframes have been put in. Okay, so now let's have a quick look at that. There we go, yep, the landing's not too bad. Okay, now once you've got this set of frameworks pretty much set up to do, you know, add extra settings and see what you can do with Twixer. A few settings I like to apply is um, this one right here, which is uh, frame blending. This sort of reduces the warping considerably depending on the video, so I'll just hit that one. It will add it, um, render time, but for a small clip like this, it's not too bad. Um, it's also essential that you right-click your clip, go to frame blending, and make sure that pixel motion is turned on. So pixel motion turned on. And then once you've done that, you can play around. Like this one enables motion blur. It's not too bad. Sometimes it looks a bit dodgy, but I'll leave that one off because it's quite clear at the moment in this video. Okay, so just have a quick scroll through that. It looks okay. Nice and slow through there. Okay, nice and slow, nice and slow. Yeah. Okay, no problems. Now, obviously you don't want this endless clip. So just get the work area, which is the part that you want to render. So I'll render it from the start to wherever the clip will actually end. So just bring it in. Let's see where it ends. Okay, that's where it ends, right there. So just bring your work area up to there. Okay, now, there's a few other things to make it nice and smooth with the transitions. So the first thing you want to do is um, select all your keyframes, right click them, and then go keyframe assistant, and then go easy ease. So once you do this, they'll change shape, but this will, as, as well as the amount of um, smooth transitioning we've done with the multiple keyframes through the clip. We've also added easy ease which will make it probably smoother through the transitions from slow to fast and vice versa. So have a quick look at this. It'll take a little bit longer to render out because of the extra settings. But you may see a difference. Okay, so once this just renders through should be enough. Hit this back. Yeah, as you can see, it's still fast, but it's less jitter when he catches the ball. A little bit more natural. Okay, that looks good. Okay. Um, I might just play with the color a little with this. So make sure your clip is selected. Effect color correction. Uh, I use individual controls, just gives you a little bit more um, control. Um, just to give it a little bit more light so you can see there's a bit of shadow that's existing in there. Uh, the green is a bit faded, so maybe give that a little bit of a nudge forward. Not that one. 
It's a tad of green to give the grass a little bit more tint. Okay, that should do for the the, uh, the colours. Okay, once you've done this and you've got everything ready to go, um, come up to composition here, uh, and you're ready to render. Add to render kit. Now, once you've done that, it'll come up with a few settings like this. Now, I use frame blending. I choose everything current settings depending on what is this work area only so that will just only render the part where we've selected in the work area most of this can stay the same unless you've really used too much stuff make sure your quality and resolution are the best possible outputs hit OK there uh, output module this is pretty much normally OK uh, there's plenty of different um, different formats you can put through I like to just keep quick time just so that it's uh, that's some generic format options if you want plenty of different things you can do, you just keep that animation I do, it's the best quality, 100 uh, hit OK um, just hit OK on that one and then just put this, I'll call it AFL mark slow ok, now I'll just put that on the desktop Quick time movie and save. Now, all you have to do now is just hit render. Um, that shouldn't take too long, it's a pretty small clip. Um, okay, the noise should be coming up any second now. Okay, there it is. So, once that's happened, um, you can have a look at the video. So, just Open this up. Quick time. If it's too big, it may not play. So if the if it lags, we we'll just have to send it to a smaller. Yeah, as you can see, it's lagging. So we'll just send this out to iTunes. Okay. Okay, so that's going. Comments, or leave them on my blog or YouTube or Vimeo or whatever else you find with my name on it. So, thanks very much for watching. Rate, comment, and subscribe. And if you have any um, requests for Twixters, just comment and I'll do my best to get it done. Okay, thanks very much.